Hello, my name is Lasse, I'm a Finnish designer working at Top Hatch and I'm here today to do some drawing on concepts. I've got the 12.9 inch iPad and as a stylus I'll be using the Apple Pencil. I'll just get right into it and create a new drawing from our gallery here. So, today my focus will be on how to make use of the new layers. However, I'm going to start by finding some reference first. As you can see, my previous image search is about bird feeders, and that's exactly what we're going to be sketching today. I was also looking for various natural forms that are suspended, and got inspired by this odd-looking tropical insect trap called pitcher plant. Once I found the image I like, tap and hold, tap copy, and the image will be on my clipboard. Since I currently have the selection tool active, a simple tap will allow me to paste that image. This action also creates a layer of its own, so I'm just gonna get rid of the default one over here, for the sake of clarity. And then I'm gonna rename this one, Reference. Alright, and since I'm only interested in the shape of these things, I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer to about half, just to prevent it from stealing all the attention. Also, since this is only going to be used as a reference, I might as well lock the layer, just in case so I won't accidentally select it or something. The next thing we'll do is create a layer for the initial sketch. Tap the plus icon for a new layer, tap the layer to rename and we'll call this one sketch. Now, I'd like to sketch using a white brush, so I'll need something darker as a background. To do this, hit settings and it's the first thing appearing above. Let's pick the heavyweight option. Okay, now I'm gonna need a nice brush to sketch with. Let's pick up the fill brush on the top and make it an airbrush, which works really well for initial sketching. To change color, tap the palette icon. I'm looking for the whitest of whites here. Here we go. Six points width should work fine. Full opacity is good because we want some contrast and it never hurts to have the program do a little smoothing for you, so I'll set that to 12. As you can see, the contrast isn't quite there yet, so I'm gonna set a custom color to the background. Again, hit settings, tap custom color, and let's find a bit darker of a gray. That should do it. Now there's nothing left to do but start sketching. I usually tend to start my sketches with center lines to keep the object somewhat balanced. Especially important now that we're trying to come up with a shape that is hanging. So as you would do on a piece of paper, I'll turn the artboard to a nice angle to draw my vertical center line. Now that's not too bad, but what I can do now is tap and hold the stroke to adjust it. It's always nicer when center lines are straight, right? Setting the smoothness up to 100. Let's add another one on the bottom here, and it's time for the fun part. Now let's try and capture the essence of these two guys on the left. Okay, as I'm drawing this I started noticing that the shape is a little side heavy. To fix this, I'll just tap, hold and drag to select the strokes I want to tweak, and by activating one or two control points I'm able to easily reshape the whole thing. Remember that when none of the control points are selected, you can scale and rotate using two fingers. In case you accidentally deselect the strokes you're manipulating, Instead of manually reselecting all of them, you can just two finger tap to undo and keep adjusting. I think the basic shape is close enough now and I can move on to coloring. I'll hide the reference photo, dim down the sketch a bit and I'll create a new layer for the base color. The next step is to select the fill stroke brush, drag the opacity up to 100 and then we need to find an appropriate color for it. I imagine that the material used to make one of these would be some sort of a ceramic, so I'll pick a neutral tint of white to start with. 
Now one of the benefits of doing this on a separate layer is that if this filled stroke doesn't come out perfectly, you could always go back and erase any spills or add some more color on areas you didn't reach without affecting any other layers. This time, figuring out the right path to do it was a trick for me. While I was adjusting the fill I just created, I noticed that the sketch on the back was barely visible. Now, I don't want this to happen, so I'll go to the settings and under selection options I'll disable highlight selection. Also the long press gesture has felt a little slow for me, so I'll have that around 0.3 seconds where I prefer to keep it. Usually the sketch lines help figuring out shapes and shadows etc. My sketch is now not only beneath the base color, but also white, so it wouldn't be visible anyway. I'll just turn the whole sketch layer into a light tint of orange, then rearrange the layers so I can just slightly see the sketch on top. In the early sketching stage I roughly visualized where the seeds would go, but I won't be needing that now, so I'll just get rid of it. Before I start adding dimension to the sketch, I want to do some of the outlines. Same process as before. Create a new layer, rename, find a brush that works for you and keep drawing. You can probably tell that I'm mostly getting the strokes right on first try without constantly undoing the strokes. Instead of always redrawing the line, I spend that time making use of the free transform feature to fit the stroke where I want it. Of course nothing beats practice, but it makes things just that much faster. Now that I got the outlines ready, it's time to start working on the depth of things. And once again I'll start with layers. I select the base color layer first, so the next one created will appear above it. I'll name it Shadow. At this point I realized that since the bird feeder has multiple parts and materials, I'm probably gonna end up having multiple layers called base color or shadow, so I better specify those names a little. After I'm done with that, let's keep coloring and make some shadows. Another way of coming up with nice crisp lines is using the precision mode. Just select whichever tool fits your purpose and set it up like a ruler. Just remember to draw on the right layer. If not, don't worry. You can always drag and drop things from one layer to another. The next step is to create some sort of a background. Once I've created another layer for it, I'll tap and hold to rearrange it. Naturally this one goes all the way to the bottom behind the others. I'll get rid of the grey background now and create a new one using nothing but a few airbrush strokes. You can get a nice gradient by using two colors and simply setting the strokes next to each other. Highlights are nearly as important as shadows, so I'll add those in their separate layers again using the airbrush tool. Adding a hint of yellow on the bottom of the item helps tying it together with the background and gives a little sense of space. Another thing that makes your design stand out is a simple shape between the object and the background. 
In some cases you can improve the balance of your composition or maybe draw attention to some specific area of your drawing. I'm sure you've seen a lot of designers use this trick before. This one I drew on a layer of its own as well, which allows me to take the mask tool, set it to low opacity and add a bit more subtleness to the shape. Now the last thing left to do is to open up my object library and drag in a tiny visitor for the bird feeder. This little detail immediately gives a sense of scale and really helps in telling the story of this concept. Now I'll just drag the bird layer on top and mirror the object so it better fits the composition. Before wrapping up, let's go through the key points of the new layers once more. The layers panel opens and closes by tapping the layers icon on the toolbar. Creating a new layer is done by tapping the plus icon on top of the layers. The new layer always appears on top of the one currently selected. You can rename the layer by tapping the edit text icon. When you want to duplicate a layer, tap the copy icon. By tapping the merge icon, the selected layer will merge down with the layer below. This action also adopts the name of the lower layer. As expected, the trash icon will delete your layer. Tapping the lock icon will lock the layer, so you won't be able to edit it. The program will let you know when you're trying to mess with a locked layer. You can unlock by either tapping the warning or by tapping the lock icon on the layer itself. The select icon will select all the strokes in that layer, which makes it really easy to edit everything in there simultaneously. By moving the slider, you can change the opacity of your layer. Tap and hold, and you'll be able to rearrange your layers. You can hide layers by tapping the eye, and by scrubbing them, you enter a so-called focus mode. This allows you to manipulate things on the current layer without affecting the other ones. This includes transforms, editing brushes, drawing, and basically whatever you can normally do. Leaving the focus mode happens by simply tapping the layer you're working on. And finally, moving things between layers is now as simple as dragging the strokes on the desired layer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a thing or two about our new update in layers. Working with layers can be a bit confusing at first, but learning how to make use of them is totally worth the effort. I'll leave a link for this drawing and our full manual in the description. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time, keep sketching.